Hey everybody, my name is Lisa and I'm the Crafty Goddess. Hello and welcome. I thought today's video uh, would be a lens mill haul. I haven't done one of those in a few months, but as my fellow fiber enthusiasts know, this time of year, this being uh, the third weekend of November, those of us who like to play with yarn on a semi-regular basis are in maker mode. We are trying to get things done in time for the holidays, for Christmas gifts, for Yule gifts, and yeah, it's it's getting down to crunch time. <laughs> uh, this morning, sorry, itchy eye, I was uh, commissioned by a dear friend of mine. Her name is Melissa. Melissa, if you're watching, hi! She asked me this morning if I would make her a couple of gifts because Melissa, like so many friends of mine and myself and my husband, she is wanting to do more local shopping this year. Sorry, excuse me. I think I got a cat hair here. Okay, yeah, it was a cat hair. <laughs> Go figure. There's cat hair everywhere in this place. Um, but yes, Melissa is doing some local shopping. She is spending her money with local makers that she knows, and I happen to be one of them, which I am very grateful for any and all business that comes my way this time of year, as this year has been... A little bit out of the ordinary shall we say where shows and festivals and large gatherings have been discouraged uh, this is kind of my bread and butter right now um, yes I do have a regular job I still have my full-time job I'm still in automotives but this is a great extracurricular opportunity to make a few extra dollars to make ends meet especially during this time of year when we're all coming down to a financial crunch uh, and of course 2020 being as fun as it has been and by fun I mean crazy um, yeah I'm, we can we can all use the help that we can get right so Melissa asked if I would make her a matching hat and scarf that necessitated a trip to my local lens mill store here in Guelph where I picked up the necessary materials and kind of shall we say went on a little bit of a spree just did that little one anyway for those of us who <laughs> who are crafters knitters crocheters etc sometimes the act of acquiring craft supplies is just as exciting as doing the crafts themselves I'm not gonna lie but um, yeah let's get to what I picked up at Lens Mill store today uh, as I mentioned my friend Melissa wanted a hat and scarf set I knit um, they're called kitty hats. I know there's another name from that became quite popular after the last uh, print, uh, last election in the States. <laughs> January 2017, there were a lot of those cute pink hats. Uh, I took a pattern that I found online and kind of ran with it. And it was the easiest kitty hat pattern I have ever done in my life. And I found the perfect yarn for my friend Melissa. She wants hers done in purple. Here you go. This was, I had almost given up hope, by the way. Um, my local lens mill store, it has a great collection of different types of yarns. But the, I like using bulky yarns for hats. Nothing too bulky, like something that takes like, say, an 8mm needle. You don't want anything bigger than that because then it just gets too, too much. Um, but I found this. This is the Bernat Softy Baby Chunky. It takes an 8 millimeter needle or size 11 US. Uh, it takes an 8 millimeter crochet hook, which translates to an L. And it's machine washable and dryable like most Bernat yarns. I mean, people, I, I know some yarn enthusiasts like to turn up their nose at various types of acrylic yarns. Uh, but I do like the stuff that comes out of Bernat and Patton's for the most part because, yes, it is acrylic, but that means it's machine washable and dryable. I like to make hats and scarves that are machine washable and dryable because in the winter months they get warm more often. Sometimes they get a little bit more dirty, so you want to keep it clean. Um, for the most part, I will dump them in the delicate cycle. Uh, this, the Softy Baby Chunky, is machine washable and dryable because it is 100% acrylic. I usually recommend putting items like that in the delicate cycle, though, just to be on the safe side. Uh, not necessarily blasting them with hot water, like a nice cool temperature delicates and then away you go but uh, I had to get three balls of this because one of them is going to be a hat and the rest is going to be the coordinating scarf so Melissa if you're watching this I hope you like the color choice you did ask for purple and 
this is so soft. Uh, let's uh, let's let's emulate the fiber spider and do the cheek test, shall we? Oh yes, it's very soft. And it's right. It lives up to the name, softy, and it's so gorgeous and smooshy. Now, speaking of acrylic yarns, I noticed that Red Heart. Sorry, pardon my reach. Um, they came out with a new type of yarn that. I'd seen in passing. I've only seen it at Lens Mill. Here's the fun part. There are three commercial stores that sell yarn. There's Lens Mill, there's Walmart, and there's Michaels, at least here in Guelph. Um, we do have a couple of different, like, cool little hip yarn shops here in Guelph as well, where I like to get the more, like, artisanal yarns, like the Cascades, uh, etc. For those of you who are familiar with yarn, like, brand names for yarns, um, but Red Heart is kind of a mainstay as far as like commercially made yarns, if that makes any sense. And I noticed that they recently came out with one called Gemstone. This is in the colorway Sapphire, but I'm seeing a little bit more green than blue. But the, the green and purple just grabbed my attention right away. Now, again, it's 100% acrylic. The yardage is, it's got 312 yards or 285 meters. One ball is 7 ounces or 200 grams. And again, this is machine washable and dryable, but it recommends on the label machine wash cold and gentle cycle, tumble dry low. So again, you're going to want to do delicate cycles with this. Um, and if you're like me, where you may be a little fearful of putting something in the wash, I just use Febreze. I just hit it with some, some Febreze, let it lay it flat to dry, and you're good to go. But yeah, I had to get a couple balls of this. This is in Sapphire. Ta -da! And what's the color of this one? This is in a colorway called Ametrine. Now, the Gemstone Collection, obviously, it's named for different gemstones. We've got Sapphire and Ametrine. I have seen, I think it was Opal and couple other colors I can't remember but this is a lovely I don't know if you can see this very well but it's like a dark purple gray mix and I fell in love with it there are a couple different colorways that I still want to play with but I thought I'll just limit myself to the two for now and we'll go from there I'm thinking nice chunky cowls maybe some hats maybe some scarves uh, if I get enough maybe a poncho something bigger oh the specs for the red heart gemstone are as follows uh, it's considered a bulky weight yarn so it's a size five it takes a six millimeter needle which roughly uh, which is a 10 us 6.5 crochet hook or a k and yeah it's, it's got some nice thickness to it and and again it's smooshy i can't wait to play with these Oh my goodness, what, what is it with you and the Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball? Yeah, I had to. It's another new shade. They, uh, Shawl in a Ball came out with a bunch of new shades. This one is called Crystal, or sorry, Reflective Crystal. I don't know if you can see the colorway on this. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It is so pretty. Um, anybody who's watched more than two videos on this channel knows that I'm a sucker for Shawl in a Ball. I saw these colors and thought, okay, I'll give them a try. There was one that I saw mostly like pastel blues and pinks, and it was called uh, Unique Unicorn. I was going to pick it up. Then I saw this and went, nah, I changed my mind. I want to play with this instead. <laughs> uh, and it's considered a medium weight yarn, so it's a four, uh, so it would be a worsted weight. It feels like it would be like a DK or fingering weight, but when you knit it up, it actually, it, it does work out to a nice worsted weight. Uh, so it takes a five millimeter knitting needle or a six crochet hook. And yeah, I can't get over it. I, just, I mean, can you blame me for buying this? Really? <laughs> just, it, it's so cool. I love it. Yeah, I'm running out of space. Oh dear. Yeah, if, if you saw what it looked like on the other side of the screen, it's just, it's clutter. <laughs> There are knitting projects and needles and scissors and things just everywhere. So I'm assuming this is going to look very similar when I'm done. Uh, now, one of the commissions that I was given by one of my coworkers, one of my one of my coworkers, uh, she works in the accounting department in my in my muggle job, 
And she, every year for the past couple of years, has given me a list of requests for gifts to make for when she, she takes them home. Well, when she takes them to see her relatives, they're out of province. Uh, and she has asked me for hats and scarves and slippers before, and she loves everything I make. Her name is Josie. She is incredible. And she gave me plenty of warnings. She dropped off her list in September, which I'm so happy about. And one of the items on the list was a pair of slippers. She said she didn't care what color. There is uh, a gray mix yarn that I've been toying with to, to make with slippers. So I went back to our basic stitch. Again, another Lion Brand yarn. Uh, and this is just so wonderfully smooshy. I, you've seen me use this before for ear savers for masks. But I didn't know which color of gray to go with. So I had to go with the charcoal heather and the silver heather just in case one didn't pan out the other one would work wonders gray yarn always comes in handy with projects i've got on the go um and for those who are curious about the specs for the basic stitch it is supposed to be an anti-pilling yarn now you know like if you make something out of yarn sometimes you get those little nubs of, of fabric and it's not quite the smooth fabric that you made because it's been worn to death this is supposed to help prevent that I haven't seen any pilling from this mind you I don't wear as many like I wear my shawls I wear my scarves whatever um, but so far this seems to hold up to the title this is a worsted weight yarn it takes a five millimeter needle or a five crochet hook so it's a an H and it's machine washable and dryable I love it it comes in a variety of colors but as I said I didn't know which color gray to go with so I went with one of each We'll see what happens. Um, and yes, in case anybody's wondering what kind of pattern I follow for slippers, it's one that's been in my family for at least two generations where you use double-stranded yarn, like two strands of yarn held together as you knit. I believe it's like 15 ridges of garter stitch and then 12 rows of ribbing, and then you decrease whatever. That's for women's sizes anyway. But um, yeah, it's the most basic knitting pattern for slippers on the market. My mom gave it to me. Her mom gave it to her. I have churned out numerous pairs of slippers from that pattern. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on it someday. Who knows? It's one of those old-fashioned, like, comforting patterns. Uh, if I'm ever at a loss to do something, which I usually am not, but just in case, I'll throw a couple strands of yarn together and make some slippers. They always come in handy, and they're so comfortable. <laughs> what else did I get? I also, uh, something else with my local lens mill store, and I'm sure it's the same for all 11 locations. They're across the province, by the way. Um, Lion Brand had a yarn out called Wool Spun. I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is no longer in wide circulation in fact the only place you'll probably see this now other than the discount bins in a lens mill store and michael's etc etc is possibly your local dollarama which is i believe a canadian dollar store and <laughs> i've seen it for sale there i could have just grabbed it at the dollarama but i saw this shade this is called campfire print I've used the, the red variegated before for wool spun. I've made hats from a hat pattern from Lion Brand from this, like one of the slouchy beanie styles. I think this paired with a nice solid black uh, in varying blocks of color will look really cool. I and hey, it might match the gray too. Who knows? But this was kind of one of those afterthoughts, like, oh, I can make a hat from this too. Uh, one of the things I like to do this time of year, other than make gifts for family and friends and persons who request uh, certain commission pieces, is I like to make a pile of hats and scarves and then donate them. There is a gentleman here in Guelph. His name is Ed Pickerskill. He had run the drop-in center that used to be on Baker Street in downtown Guelph uh, until unfortunately they 
were no longer. I don't know if it was how if they lost their lease. I'm not sure what the exact story is behind why the drop-in center is no longer. If anybody knows what the story is behind why they closed the doors, please comment down below. I don't want to spread misinformation, uh, but I know that Ed is still helping. The drop-in center was basically a place for you know, for, for homeless persons to come in and find some shelter, maybe get some food and warm drinks. Uh, they had an art program there that a couple of my friends participated in. And it seemed like, you know, it was, it was like a little hub for those who, who needed some place to go. Um, I had been there maybe once or twice. And uh, I, I know that when they closed their doors, it was a shock to the community. But now Ed runs a program called The Bench. He's not in an actual building. He will be on a park bench in, in the downtown core distributing foodstuffs and clothing, like hats, gloves, socks, mittens, that sort of thing. So what I will do is every once in a while I'll make a pileup of hats and socks, or scarves, sorry. I haven't made socks in a while. That just reminded me. I should get on that. And I will donate them because sometimes you just need like that extra layer of hand knit warmth to to keep you warm during the holidays and I like doing charity work so I wish I had more time to do charity work I wish I had more hours during the day where I could knit not just for myself and for friends etc but you know for charity because it does come in handy it goes a long way and every time I've dropped off a bag of donations uh, either to Ed or to whatever charity was doing some sort of fundraising drive, they've, they've always been 100% grateful, which war it warms my heart, it warms their hearts, it warms somebody's head, <laughs> and it's a win-win. So I think some of these uh, purchases may go towards that as well. But uh, yeah, when, when you come to the local Lynn's Mill store here in Guelph, when you go in the front doors, you're going to want to take a hard left and just go straight to the back. You will find the yarn room. When you go into the yarn room, it is like stepping into Willy Wonka's Chocolate Paradise where you just walk around and you see all the shelves with different colors and you're overwhelmed with choices and possibilities of things to make. And it's a wonderful experience. I absolutely love it. Oh, and I also picked up a couple of uh, circular needles as well, both by Susan Bates. Uh, I picked up a 4.5 millimeter cable needle, which is 91 centimeters in length because I am working on another shawl. Is anybody shocked? No. <laughs> I'm working on a shawl using, using, sorry, I can't talk to me. It's Saturday. Um, and I haven't had enough coffee, clearly. But I'm using a worsted weight yarn. Let me just actually shimmy this over here. The needles that I'm using right now, they're running out of space. This is a pattern that I found online. It is called the Tana Shawl. It's a free pattern. I found it through Ravelry and Pinterest. And this is actually one of the Skinny Cakes yarn that I picked up on one of my previous Michaels hauls. Um, yeah, the colorway is absolutely gorgeous. This was the Tarte Tatin. So I started this last weekend. I started this last weekend when the when the final broadcast for Unis Honus was happening, I needed something to occupy my hands because that 12-hour broadcast went on forever. But it was wonderful. I miss it. That's kind of why I didn't post last weekend as well because I was still a little, little bit of mourning. It was a great channel. And it was such a great idea too. You get two popular YouTubers coming together, joining forces, putting out a channel that only lasts one calendar year, like 365 days. Every day they put up a new video, they tried something new, they challenged themselves. And I think it kind of, you know, set the bar for challenges that fellow YouTube creators can indulge in as well. So what did I do? I started a new shawl. <laughs> but I needed a new needle. I like the Susan Bates collection. Uh, especially the aluminum because the stitches just slide right off the needles and it's wonderful. And I also had to pick up a 9mm, but this cable is a little bit shorter. It's 29 inches or 73 centimeters. I'm going to be using this for cowls, like the extra super thick bulky cowls. Uh, this is going to be a dream. I've needed these for a while actually. So yeah, on top of yarn they also have needles. They've got crochet hooks. Uh, the Lens Mill stores also carry knit picks supplies, interchangeable needle tips, uh, and interchangeable cables. 
I think they used to sell the ball winders as well, but when I was here, yet when I was there today, they didn't have any. I know, but that's okay. But yeah, there's my haul. That was what I bought from Lens Mill. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm making a family member who owns the store very happy by continuing to give them my patronage and spending a king's ransom on fiber stuff. So that's it. That's all I picked up, at least until I ran out of ideas or I need more purple yarn. Anyway, if you liked what you saw in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you're working on right now if you're creating anything for holiday gift giving. I would love to hear your ideas. I'd love to see what, what you folks are up to. Um, if you haven't hit the, the, the notification bell, please do so. Please hit subscribe. I'm still going strong with subscribers and I would love to see the numbers get up just so I can do another draw and give away something that I've made with my with my two hands and gift one of you with something that I made. I would love to see that happen. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Thanks for watching me show off my yarn purchases again. <laughs> It's always been fun spending time. Uh, let's do this again sometime. I, I want to keep this creativity flowing. Anyway, keep making cool stuff. Take care of yourselves, and please stay safe. I'll talk to you soon.